obviously the more the storm pushes west, uh, the 11 a.m. advisory actually nudged it back a little east. The further west uh, the, the storm tracks, the less likely you're going to have impacts um, here in Surfside. Um, however, given this plan, and if this plan is able to go forward, it's the opinion of the Division of Emergency Management and Director Guthrie uh, that this building can be brought down prior to those impacts. And so if you have the building down and you start to see wind pick up, you know, that may not even necessitate them stopping at all at that point. Um, it depends. If they are out there, though, and you start to get some of these gusts with that structure there, that would be a real, real hazard. And I would imagine it would likely cause them to do a work stoppage. So taking the building down, given the fact that the storm is coming, and given the fact you are going to have to do this anyways, uh, is the prudent thing to do. And I think it will, it will lead to the most, the course of action that most minimally disrupts the rescue efforts. When will that come down? What's that? When will the building come down? Um, I'll let, I know Kevin is, is working with Mayor Burkett and Kava. I know there's, there's they got to sign the, the, the con, they got a contractor do it, but they are doing that right now. And I'd imagine Mayor Kava is going to have that announcement uh, relatively short order. Well, maybe Kevin, you want to just speak to that because I know you were involved in it. So uh, the second question I'm going to let Mayor Kava talk about because Mayor Kava talked to those individuals. Um, we, you know, in emergency management, we make the best decision on the information we have at the time. And when Mayor Kava came up here, and I'm, I'm sure she's going to reiterate this, she made the best decision on the information she had at the time. A couple of hours later, another con not a contractor but another set of engineers came in and gave a new briefing which allowed there to be an opportunity for us to be able to do something different and again I, I want to give uh, Mayor Cobb the opportunity to come up here and give those details okay thank you I'll let the mayor uh, talk about that but I think uh, what, what Kevin is talking about is yeah, bringing it straight down with a charge, some type of charge. What, uh, what analysis were you given that let you make this decision before those winds started? In terms of the uh, the building, yeah. Well, that, that was obviously was well, well, that was obviously a decision that the, that the mayor had jurisdiction, so she made the decision. We're supportive of it. You know, we think it. We think it, given the circumstances, is is the best best thing to do because uh, you know you'd hate to see. Um, there'd be another disaster out there with this building being if it falls in the wrong way um, That would really put us back and so given the di difficult circumstances um, You know, I think both uh, Surfside and Miami-Dade um, are making the, the best decision under the circumstances And again, we pledged support from the beginning to be able to work through this problem We sent the engineering know-how and then we are going to handle the cost of it and, and we're happy to do that as you know the east side models wobble, will that accelerate the bridges out of the building? Uh, I, I think that will be dependent on what, what uh, the mayor is doing, but I, I don't know that we would get impacts here. If this thing starts moving quickly, I think it would all be done, even if we did get a wobble east, because we probably wouldn't be looking at impacts uh, here till what do you think, Kevin, maybe late Monday, early Tuesday? Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, so we, so we do have some time. And that's why when we, when we do these things for the hurricanes, I mean, we just want to give people the ability to prepare the, the counties that we've enunciated, you know, that can, that can change as the, the storm of the track changes. If it does go west, we could even take Miami-Dade out of it if there's not going to be an impact in Miami-Dade. Um, if, it, if it stays closer east, then obviously, potentially, as we get into northern Florida, we're probably going to have to add some counties in the interior. Uh, so that's all there. We're ready. We're watching every track and, uh, and making whatever adjustments uh, that we need to do. Um, final thing I'll just say before I head back, and I'm going to do some more stops here and then I, then I will be in the EOC in Tallahassee later. But um, my wife and I were able to go back to, to the memorial wall down the street. Uh, I was there early on in this and uh, man, it's, it's uh, the amount of outpouring you see has grown exponentially. Uh, it was very, uh, very moving because when I first went, I knew some of the families. Now I've met a lot more of them. And so I recognize uh, these, these folks and I've heard stories about uh, what they, their lives and what they meant to, to their family and friends. Uh, so it was really, um, 
it was really moving. And, um, you know, I look at that and uh, it, it just, it's such a range. I mean, you have people who, uh, who, who lived a full life at age 90 plus, you have young kids, you have some of these um, younger adults in the prime of their life have all this opportunity ahead of them. Um, you know, very, very um, special group of people. So it's, um, you know, the, the communities come together and I think that's made it easier. I know the families really appreciate all the support, uh, but it's tough um, and it's really been, uh, really been difficult to see. I'm gonna be going to a, um, uh, a service uh, for, for one of the synagogues up in Aventura. Uh, they have some of their uh, congregates, um, you know, w w lived in lived in that building and are still missing. And so, you know, this uh, this impact, you know, up and down this coast, uh, you see it in, in a whole bunch of different uh, community organizations, religious organizations. I mean, it's really touched um, a lot of people. And uh, we're, um, you know, we put obviously a lot of effort uh, into it as a state and as a local community, and we'll continue to do it. Um, but uh, you know, it's a uh, it, it's been it's been it's been real difficult because I think uh, you don't expect to see something like this and um, it just touched a lot of people. So we'll we'll have more updates on the hurricane shortly. So. And the tra and to speak in Spanish, we have the Lieutenant Governor Jeanette Nunes. Buenos días. Esta mañana el gobernador firmó la orden ejecutiva emitiendo un estado de emergencia debido a la amenaza del huracán Elsa. Como escuchamos, han disminuido lo que es la categoría. Ahora es tormenta tropical eh, a partir de esta mañana. Hemos visto también los impactos de Elsa comenzarán a afectar tal vez los callos de la Florida y partes de la península del sur de la Florida y también el sur oeste, eh, posiblemente extendiéndose hacia el norte del estado de la Florida. Estamos preparados para el riesgo eh, de tornados, eh, obviamente lluvias torrenciales y tal vez inundaciones. Eh, estamos también eh, monitoreando la trayectoria. Sabemos que los huracanes, las tormentas tropicales son propensos a cambiar lo que es la trayectoria, así que vamos a mantenernos eh, informados y monitoreando muy acerca. Eh, debido al estado de incertidumbre, el gobernador con su orden ejecutiva ha incluido los próximos condados de parte de la emergencia. Charlotte, Citrus, Collier, DeSoto, Hardy, Fernando, Hillsboro, Lee, Levy, Manatee, Miami-Dade, Monroe, Pasco, Pinellas, and Sarasota. Esos condados son parte de la orden ejecutiva. Obviamente, si cambia la trayectoria, eh, podemos incluir y quitar condados de la lista. Eh, también debido a la amenaza de tormenta, la demolición del edificio restante de Surfside es una necesidad urgente. Sabemos que han habido muchos ingenieros analizando y monitoreando esa, esa, esa parte del edificio restante y debido a lo que tenemos aquí, los recursos del departamento de transporte, eh, ellos han podido examinar la estructura y determinar el camino para seguir lo que es la demolición. El gobernador también anunció que el Estado va a pagar todos los costos asociados con la demolición de la estructura restante. El gobernador apoya esa decisión que la va a hacer la alcaldesa. Estamos aquí para apoyar y obviamente para ayudar con los costos. Creemos que es necesario, que es lo correcto. Sabemos que es un tema bastante difícil porque muchos que sobrevivieron el colapso tienen muchos de, de sus eh, artículos personales. Y entendemos que es un tema muy emocionante para ellos, pero es lo correcto, no podemos arriesgar las vidas de ellos. Y también queremos reiterar que no podemos seguir poniendo en riesgo las vidas de nuestros rescatistas eh, que están trabajando continuamente y por eso estamos de acuerdo con esa decisión. El gobernador, la primera dama, yo tuvimos la oportunidad de nuevo de ir al sitio donde están las fotos, las memorias, y hemos podido hablar obviamente con muchos familiares y, y de verdad es algo muy difícil para nuestra comunidad, nuestro estado, poder escuchar las vidas de las personas que nos han contado los seres queridos. Y de nuevo queremos seguir unidos en oración para los familiares, las amistades, todos que están trabajando aquí y vamos a seguir continuando apoyando. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. And now I welcome Miami-Dade County Mayor, Honorable Daniela Levine Cava.
Here we are. It's day 10 of this unthinkable tragedy. I'm extremely proud to be joined on this site this morning by first responders who've been working tirelessly around the clock, as we all know, over the last nearly week and a half. So as we prepare for Hurricane Elsa, we're bringing in new federal teams, new federal teams to allow some of our other task force members to deploy for the storm. We've asked a few of those first responders who are now rotating out of here today so that we, our community, can thank them, can thank them on behalf of everyone who's watched them in action, who's cheered them on, we've prayed with them, we've cried with them, their extraordinary bravery and dedication in the mission of this incredible risk that they've taken. And here they are standing with us today. And you all know they're here as representatives because there's hundreds more like them. <laughs> Our community and the whole global, global community has been watching around the world and we are so grateful for your continuing to hold us in your hands across the world. As we continue to search through the night, our teams recovered two additional victims. The number of confirmed victims now stands at 24. That's 188 accounted for and 124 unaccounted for. The numbers are fluid and will continue to change as we've told you repeatedly. As the governor mentioned, we're doing everything we can to move forward with demolition as soon as we have a final path to do so. And we are so grateful to the governor, to the state for stepping up and offering to pay for this demolition so that it can proceed expeditiously as soon as we have that final path. We have experts right now on site evaluating and the contract has been signed for the demolition to begin. We did speak to the families this morning, both the survivors who still have their belongings in that tower and to the family members who are waiting for the search and rescue to continue. So they have all been informed and are aware. I also want to address concerns about animals that may have been left in the building. Many in the community have raised this concern. We are all very aware and uh, working hard I want to be very clear that search and rescue conducted three separate searches, a primary, secondary, and tertiary, and they found no animals. I was informed this morning that they did a sweep with cameras and they found no animals at this time. I've also been in touch with the contractor and provided the locations that were given to me of possible animals still in the building. And uh, they're aware and doing everything that they might do just to make an additional search. But I want to be very clear that they would not be doing that on site because they are not going to be able to go into those units. It is not safe for anyone to go beyond the first floor. I am always, I very much understand that pets are part of people's families. I have always been a pet owner myself and uh, my heart goes out to those who fear uh, for their animals and I just want you to know that additional efforts have been made and are being made. So this morning I signed a local state of emergency for Hurricane Elsa and out of an abundance of caution we are ensuring that we are mobilizing everything we need in the county to prepare for any possible impacts. There's still a lot of uncertainty about the path. Uh, we're going to hear from our meteorologist but we are continuing to monitor closely uh, and if there are any potential impacts to Miami-Dade, we are ready and we urge everybody at home to take the necessary precautions. Uh, you know what to do. We're being briefed regularly by the National Weather Service and they'll be here and they'll provide us with an update and they are embedded with us in this operation. So now we have all the federal sources, all the state sources, we have our Weather Bureau and of course our numerous county departments that are on site working around the clock. I am truly surrounded by heroes and sheroes. This gives me strength every single day. Every man and woman who is now here driving this operation forward 
and everyone in the community is also now getting ready for a possible storm. Please continue to pray for the families, the survivors, the men and women who are bravely searching. Aquí estamos al comienzo del día 10. Estoy muy orgulloso de estar esta mañana en el sitio con algunos de nuestros socorristas que han estado trabajando incansablemente en el sitio durante la última semana y media. Nuestra comunidad y la comunidad global que observa en, en, en todo el mundo están muy agradecidas por su servicio. Mientras continuamos buscando, durante la noche nuestros equipos recuperaron a dos víctimas adicionales. El número de víctimas confirmadas es ahora 24, con 188 contabilizados, contabilizadas y 124 desaparecidas. Vamos a tomar un momento para agradecer a los socorristas que, estamos, que están con nosotros. Como mencionó el gobernador, estamos haciendo todo lo posible para avanzar con la demolición tan pronto como tengamos un camino final para hacerlo. Y ahora mismo recibimos las noticias que hemos, que el gobernador, el estado, ya firmó el contrato y ellos van a seguir adelante con la demolición. También quiero abordar las preocupaciones sobre los animales que quedan en el edificio. Pasaron tres búsquedas y no encontraron. Finalmente, ellos hicieron una búsqueda de cámara recién para verificar y yo he nombrado los, las mascotas que me han mencionado y la compañía que está haciendo la de demolición también está revisando a ver si pueden salvar, si les encuentra, aunque no pueden entrar físicamente arriba del primer piso. Es demasiado peligroso entrar personalmente en este edificio y hasta el momento con tres pasos con las cámaras y todo lo que han hecho no han encontrado ninguna mascota yo también tengo animales gatos y estoy muy eh, yo con, entiendo muy bien que son parte de la familia esta mañana firmé el estado de emergencia local para el huracán Elsa para que por precaución a medida que Emergimos de nuestra comunidad para estar listos para posibles impactos de tormentas. Todavía hay mucha incertidumbre, incertidumbre en el pronóstico y por lo tanto continuamos monitoreando de cerca mientras estamos a nuestra comunidad a que se lleve todos los preparativos en casa. Continúe orando. Continúe. Continúe y yo continúo orando por las familias que hemos perdido a los hombres y mujeres que buscan con valentía. De verdad son mis héroes y ustedes, de ustedes también. Gracias a todos y bendiciones. Gracias. We're going to do questions after. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Representing the National Weather Service, Robert Molleda. Good morning. Uh, we continue to closely monitor Tropical Storm Elsa. A bit of good news. Uh, the storm was downgraded to a tropical storm with the advisory that came out at 11 a.m. However, we still need to be watching this very closely as it gradually approaches Florida. Uh, you heard the governor earlier mention the, general, the timeline that we're looking at for when the conditions are going to start uh, to, to get worse here in South Florida, and th that's uh, as early as Monday afternoon. We could start to see some more frequent rain bands moving through with some gusty winds, and then that will continue through Tuesday. Uh, a lot depends on a, the exact track the storm takes. So you know, as of right now, the center of the storm is forecast to pass over the Florida Straits, come close to the lower keys Monday night, and then up to or, or close to the Gulf Coast of Florida on Tuesday. But remember, uh, any slight shift to the east uh, would mean that we would get worse conditions here in Southeast Florida, the uh, Miami, Fort Lauderdale area, uh, heavier, you know, heavy rains, gusty winds, uh, tropical storm force winds are certainly a possibility, so we, uh, we can't let our guard down. We still need to be watching this very closely. Uh, so the weather this weekend, well, today and tomorrow should be nice, and then conditions gradually starting to get worse late Sunday night, and then especially on Monday and Tuesday is the time frame when we could see 
the worst conditions with the storm. In Espanol, eh, seguimos monitoreando muy de cerca el progreso de la tormenta tropical Elsa. Buenas noticias que sí fue degradado a tormenta tropical. Sin embargo, debemos de seguir monitoreando muy de cerca eh, la tormenta ya eh, debido a que, como indicó el gobernador eh, previamente, los impactos eh, se, para el sur de la Florida serían sentidos eh, tan temprano como el lunes por la tarde y continuando durante el día del, del martes. La trayectoria de la, el, o el pronóstico de, de, la, de la trayectoria indica de que va a pasar, eh, pudiera pasar cerca de los callos y después la costa oeste o la costa del Golfo de la Florida. Sin embargo, un, un desvío ligero hacia el este eh, pudiera traer a la, o las condiciones más fuertes o más severas sobre el sureste de la Florida o la zona de Miami y Fort eh, Por lo tanto, debemos de, de seguir muy, muy de cerca esta tormenta no bajar nuestra guardia porque todavía estamos bajo una amenaza de condiciones de tormenta tropical, ya como acabo de indicar, eh, tan temprano como el lunes por la tarde y, cu y continuando durante el día del martes. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Mr. Moyen. Division Director for Office of Emergency Management, Deputy Incident Commander Charles Cyril. Good morning, everyone. The Miami-Dade County Office of Emergency Management continues to monitor now Tropical Storm Elsa. Please continue to monitor the storm over the next 36 hours and begin doing what you need to secure your home and your family. This includes in securing loose items and outdoor furniture and bringing them indoors if necessary. If you have tree trimmings, now's the time to bring those to trash and recycling centers near you. Please ensure that you have completed your preparation by Sunday evening. As always, the 311 Contact Center is available for any questions. If you have more information, for more information, please go to miamidade.gov slash hurricane and please download the Ready MDC app. If you'd like, as part of our own preparation, we will be temporarily transitioning to our emergency operations center in Doral starting tomorrow morning. Search and rescue operations will continue as conditions permit. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And it's in Spanish on behalf of the Deputy Incident Commander, Miami-Dade Fire Rescue Director of Media and Public Relations, Erica Benitez. Muy buenos días. Así como escucharon, la Oficina del Manejo de Emergencias de Miami-Dade continúa monitoreando la tormenta tropical Elsa mientras se acerca rápidamente hacia la Florida. Eh, les pedimos a todas las personas que por favor continúen monitoreando eh, esta tormenta ya que puede llegar a afectarnos. Asegúrese de haber completado su preparación antes del domingo por la noche. Además, eh, como siempre, el centro de llamadas del 311 en el condado de Miami-Dade está disponible para cualquier pregunta que tengan. Si desea obtener más información sobre la preparación para huracanes, por favor visite Miami-Dade barra oblicua hurricane o descargue la aplicación Ready MDC. Como parte de nuestros propios pre preparativos, estaremos trasladando temporalmente el centro de operaciones de emergencia del condado a nuestra oficina del Doral. Y por ahora las operaciones de búsqueda y rescate continuarán mientras el clima lo permita de esa manera. Muchas gracias. Gracias, Erika. Surfside Mayor Charles Burkett. Good morning, everybody. Uh, today I attended the family meeting to briefing to listen to the status of what was uh, happening with the families. I also uh, walked the site to observe what was happening at the site. I first want to thank uh, the governor and the lieutenant governor and Mayor Cava for their exemplary leadership. As you can see, the governor flies down almost every day to be here with us and support us and give us reassurances and resources. I know that the town of Surfside, I know that Dade County and South Florida very much appreciate that support. I know Mayor Cava does also. It, uh, it is not lost on me that uh, the governor, the lieutenant governor, and the mayor of Dade County have not uh, forgotten what their duty is, and that is to serve 
We are all here to serve and support and do the jobs that we were put here to do. And I'm proud to be a part of that effort. And I can tell you that from my perspective, everybody is pulling and pulling hard and passionately. I want to thank the mayor, the Dade County Mayor Kava, for uh, addressing the issue uh, that I've talked to her about and I know that she's received many emails about, and that is potential pets in the building. Uh, I, her compassion on that subject is, is, is uh, appreciated. And uh, you know, while there are some that probably aren't as focused on that, she focuses on the little details, and that's what makes her a great mayor. I want to. I want to uh, also note that uh, the, the fire department has had in place from the very beginning a policy to recover personal items, including jewelry, iPads, iPhones, etc., from the debris. Uh, those items are noted and located with GPS technology. They are then put into a container and preserved for the family. So we're just uh, not grabbing debris and throwing it into a pile and taking it away. The demolition of this building is a very, very important, significant subject. Yesterday morning, I was meeting with the governor to talk about uh, that very issue, along with Mayor Kava. Mayor Kava has experts that were telling her yesterday that it would be weeks before we could do it. Uh, the governor and I sat in a meeting and it was obvious that the building was a problem and we agreed that uh, the only solution uh, for that problem was to eliminate it. And we voiced those concerns to Mayor Kava who went back and took decisive action and instead of waiting weeks and allowing the bureaucracy to crawl has made a very dramatic decision and uh, signed the order to get this building taken down immediately. The fear was that the hurricane may take the building down for us and take it down in the wrong direction, on top of the pile where we have victims. I, I congratulate Mayor Kava for her decisive leadership in making this happen, I think as early as tomorrow, and that will allow our rescue workers to pour all over the entire site without fear of any danger from falling debris or falling buildings. Lastly, I just want to announce uh, that I had asked our manager to consider taking out traffic barriers. You know, obviously traffic uh, in and out of this town um, has been very difficult, especially for our residents. Uh, I had asked the uh, manager, Andy Hyatt, and our police chief, uh, Julio Yero, to consider removing barriers in and out of the town so that our residents could more freely move around and also support some of the traffic, the support traffic that's moving in and out of our town on a more westerly street uh, away from Collins and Harding. Uh, they considered that and they just reported back to me that they had decided to take immediate action. So I'm glad that that's happening so that the traffic may move more freely and our residents uh, can uh, do what they need to do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Miami-Dade Fire Rescue Chief Alan Kaminsky. Good morning. Our search and rescue operations are still underway and ongoing. Unfortunately, we're still unable to expand our current search and rescue grids. We're still focusing on grid B3 and part of B2, as well as D3 and part of D2. The building itself has been discussed, has been a primary uh, significant concern for us all throughout. And, uh, you know, we're moving forward, taking actions to uh, eliminate that hazard. Uh, we'll be relocating some of our assets in preparation uh, for the storm. Uh, so some of our logistical support assets will be relocated uh, to different positions and then moving back uh, after the storm passes. Uh, I definitely, again, our federal task forces uh, that are on hand, Virginia, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Indiana, and New Jersey, as well as our Florida task forces that are, you know, demobilized and in the process of demobilizing. And as you see, we have a few behind us, Florida Task Force 2, Florida Task Force 4. And en este momento continuamos nuestra operación de búsqueda y rescate. Actualmente estamos trabajando sobre los cuadrantes a los cuales tenemos acceso mientras nos preparamos para la llegada de esta tormenta. 
Eh, también continuamos desarrollando un plan de contingencia, el cual incluye el traslado de nuestros recursos a, a otros sitios, incluyendo nuestros equipos encargados de la logística de esta operación. Varios equipos federales o cuadrillas de búsqueda y rescate urbano llegaron para brindar asistencia en cuanto a la llegada de esta tormenta y además brindar el relevo para algunos de los equipos que están trabajando aquí en la Florida. Eh, en este momento quiero reconocer los esfuerzos de estos hombres y mujeres, los cuales han estado trabajando arduamente día y noche buscando víctimas bajo los escombros. Eh, uno de los equipos que tenemos aquí, tenemos equipos de aquí de la Florida, al igual que equipos de Virginia, Ohio, Pensilvania, Indiana y Nueva Jersey. Y estamos muy agradecidos por la ayuda que nos han brindado en estos momentos tan difíciles. Muchas gracias. Gracias, Erika. Miami-Dade Police Department Strategic Response Division Chief Ed Knievel. Hello, everyone. Uh, as we progress into the July 4th weekend, I just want to provide a brief update on traffic closures and checkpoints. Uh, even though we're shifting resources out of the area, let me reassure you that the Miami-Dade Police Department will remain on site. Uh, this is for your own safety. We're asking that residents please stay out of the area as this continues to be a serious and delicate matter. Thank you. Closures will remain Collins from 81 Street to 91 Street, Harding Avenue from 81 Street also to 96 Street. We do have uh, checkpoints on Collins and 81 Street, Harding and 81 Street, Harding and 96 Street, and Abbott and 96 Street. We will continue to allow access to the residents of the area, and this includes employees, um, restaurant business owners, hotel employees, hotel guests. We're working closely, or any of the residents that are within three, zip code 33154. Uh, our traffic plan has been updated and has been posted on social media, and we're, very, we're working very closely with the Surfside Police Department to ensure traffic enhances for the residents that are, that are within the area. Thank you in advance to the community and the residents for your support and cooperation. In Spanish, in Espanol. Mientras nos preparamos para el fin de semana festivo, les queremos recordar de las calles que van a estar cerradas y los puntos de reviso de seguridad. Eh, a este momento tenemos cerrado eh, Collins y la 81 calle, Collins y, y Harding y la 81 calle. Harding y la 96 calle, y Abbott y la 96 eh, calle. Esta zona seguirá una zona restringida para la seguridad de todos, y se, seguiremos eh, trabajando con la policía de Surfside para, para asegurar que los residentes tienen acceso al área. Muchas gracias y gracias por su cooperación. Thank you, Chief, and for our Creole translator, Ivans Morisot. Bonsoir tout le monde. Et même dans la dixième journée, l'équipe en continue, l'équipe secours continue à travailler dur, sans arrêter. Dans huit ans, des gens de l'autre victime que nous sommes capables de compter qu'on y a, nous sommes capables de joindre. Et qu'on y a, nous sommes capables de compter que six fois à vingt-quatre que nous joignons. Cent vingt-huit que nous capables compter toujours et cent vingt-quatre que nous continuons à chercher. Nous gagnons une autre équipe qui fait joindre avec nous et qui peut aider nous avec démolition. Faut Moi, je fais ça clé tout, que toute communauté, avec toute qualité de recherche, ça a fait, a doit fait pour effondrement, parce que nous devons protéger l'équipe nous, l'équipe d'urgence nous. Maintenant, moi, si on un lot décret, ça c'est, ça c'est magistrat qui a vaincu dit. Maintenant, moi, si on un lot décret d'urgence pour cyclone Elsa qui a pas approché sur nous, nous devons prendre un pile précaution pour tout le monde qui n'a mis à mi dé. Faut nous clair, nous pouvons nous clair sous quelle direction que les poils prennent, mais faut que nous commencer à préparer nous. Nous par contre qui impact les poils fait, causer et qui 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 des dégâts les poils causer dans Miami Dade. Moi encourager tout résident Miami Dade Dieu pour préparer yo, faire préparation tout, surtout pour nous protéger bien nous à famille nous. Merci. Thank you, sir. We're going to go into questions and answers. For those that are, haven't been here before, we're going to raise our hands, wait till you're called upon, address the speaker. Associated Press, we're going to go first here. 
the mayor or the fire chief, uh, if somebody goes through the process for bringing down the building, how that will be done, the timeline as, as you know it now, that type of thing? Yes, we're, we're definitely finalizing uh, the plan. Uh, so they kind of walk through. Uh, we'll have them go through the site to determine exactly the process that they want. It will be a several hour process in regards to setting up for what needs to occur. And then, you know, we'll be able to regain uh, our search and rescue efforts. But to, to, to confirm, it'll be with the cars as opposed to some sort of wrecking ball or wrecker. Like uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll do it. Second one right here. Yes, where there's, there will be a tarp. Uh, there's a strategy in regards to the areas that we've searched will be covered. Uh, so that will be deployed uh, before uh, any uh, demolition occurs. Uh, so that way we know what we searched and what other new debris uh, that would possibly fall that direction could be removed and we know it wasn't part of the original. And then in regards to the efforts, uh, yes, I mean, we're, you know, we're conducting efforts. There's areas that we haven't been able to search, uh, you know, with this building and the situation that it's in. Uh, very difficult, you know, I mean, this is the difficult challenges and obstacles that we, we face and decisions that, that myself, the mayor, that, you know, we have to make in regards to overall how we deploy, how we look at things, what's going on. It's been difficult and challenging just having our brave men and women out there conducting what they're doing right now, uh, just having the engineers and what they're advising in regards to that building. So, you know, this is just another difficult decision that we have to make, but it's a decision that we have to make, one, in regards to that, uh, as well as with the impending storm coming, and then we wouldn't have any control in what direction the building would fall. And, and I, I just would like to add that, as the chief said, engineers are on site, they're still conducting their due diligence, so we do not have an exact uh, time frame at this time. Move on with number three right here, ma'am, and number four with Bruce Sharp. Well, yes, I mean, in regards to, to the evacuation per se with a building, I mean, we're waiting for the final plan. So yes, we definitely will expand. We'll have all the safety precautions in place, uh, all the necessary resources that we need in place uh, before anything like that occurs. Uh, in regards to storm or, or what type of evacuation overall, it all depends on the storm direction. So currently right now, uh, that's not you know in the equation or in, in play of what we're looking uh, as if the storm wobbles, as we said earlier, if it does shift a different direction, then obviously, yes, that will be another matter that has to be addressed. So the, the proposal that is here now, this uh, proposed demolition, is a very narrow footprint, so we're not looking at major impacts to the area or additional evacuations. And um, again, we are still in the due diligence process, and we will get back to you as soon as we have the exact details. Um, so I'm so grateful that cities have taken up the call to explore their own uh, building inspections. And in the case of North Miami Beach, there was a building that was delayed in its recertification process. The city issued an order that all delinquent recertifications would be expected within 30 days. This particular report came in very quickly, and on the basis of what was in that report, North Miami Beach decided to evacuate the building. Uh, currently, uh, we had six uh, that tested positive from one particular task force. Uh, that task force has uh, left uh, the scene. Uh, we also did contact tracing throughout, and we've tested all 424 Florida task force members, uh, you know, in addition to the ones that were from the task force that uh, left. So we have no negative at that time, and we'll continue to monitor as well. Mayor. Mayor, we're getting part of that. Alison Barber with the DCJ and MSPB. A couple questions going back to uh, the demolition. 
Empezamos este día con buenas noticias. Despertate bien temprano, muestra tu alegría, baila conmigo, saca lo bueno de cada día. Empieza un nuevo camino, con mucho optimismo y ánimo, desayunemos junto en familia. Desde el lunes hasta el domingo, sentado en la misma mesa, tengamos siempre arriba la cabeza. Disfrutemos lo más simple de la vida, siempre con, con la con Margarita. Manicera, saca lo bueno de cada día. So when I spoke to you yesterday evening, uh, we had not heard from this particular demolition expert. This expert has the experience to move very quickly. That resource was brought to us. It was not known at the time. And, and let me emphasize something here. We are working together. The state, the federal, the local, we are communicating every step of the way. When we spoke at the press event, that was the best information that we all had at that particular moment. The fact that uh, experts in demolition came forward and said they could do this, then it had to be explored. We had to meet with all of the engineers to review it, all of the state, uh, federal, and local, and we all decided that this would be a, a, a good step forward. Uh, the, they, we're deployed quickly, they're doing their uh, due diligence, we're all doing our due diligence. They can move very quickly. This particular company says that once they get started, it can be done within the time frame that the governor said. So I just want to emphasize here, this was not a resource that was known to us yesterday at six o'clock in the evening. Shortly thereafter, we learned about it. We spent the evening understanding it, uh, coming to agreement across all of the jurisdictions. And, and then they were, this morning, came on site to evaluate in more detail the steps forward. So that's exactly where we are. Hopefully, they'll be able to move forward quickly. And obviously, it is all of our fervent desire that this can be done safely before the storm so that we can direct the demolition. And this demolition would be one that would protect and preserve evidence and allow the maximum search and rescue activity to continue. What's the name of this company? Hey, Mayor, what were you told about? We're going to end with Spanish. Ma'am. The governor said you could answer my Estamos siguiendo todavía con la búsqueda de rescate y esta demolición es de tipo que nos eh, deja continuar con eh, búsqueda y rescate. Thank you much, folks. Appreciate it. Wait, wait. Mayor, the governor said you can answer my question. You got it. What was the governor said? The governor said. Okay. We've been watching officials in Surfside, Florida, update reporters 10 days after that deadly building collapse. The confirmed death toll was raised to 24 people, with 124 still unaccounted for. Governor Ron DeSantis told Floridians that they will continue to monitor Tropical Storm Elsa and its possible trajectory. The great concern there, the impact the storm may have on the safety of search crews. 
The governor also announced that the state will cover the cost of demolition for the other building deemed unsafe. Officials in Florida are assessing that situation and believe that they can bring down the tower quickly, possibly as early as tomorrow, minimizing the amount of time search crews will have to stop work at the site. We are interrupting to take you to Surfside, Florida, where officials are giving a live update on that deadly building collapse there. Right on the edge of a Category 1 hurricane that fortunately has gone just a little bit below. So there's about 70 mile per hour sustained winds that have been registered. Uh, now the impact from the storm, whether it's a strong tropical storm or a weak hurricane, uh, will begin affecting the Florida Keys and portions of the South Florida Peninsula as early as Monday. Uh, possibly uh, spreading northward through the peninsula on Tuesday, depending on the track. So we're preparing for the risk of isolated tornadoes, storm surge, heavy rainfall, and flash flooding. Now the track uh, or the severity of the storm is still uncertain. Um, the state of emergency applies to the following county, Charlotte, Citrus, Collier, DeSoto, Hardy, Hernando, Hillsborough, Lee, Levy, Manatee, Miami-Dade, Monroe, Pasco, Pinellas, and Sarasota counties. Uh, you're looking at a, a track that is going to go pass over probably the western portion of Cuba, uh, end up in the Florida Straits, and then start impacting Florida uh, with the eye of the storm right now looking to be on the west side uh, of Florida. Um, and so we obviously do what we do when it comes to uh, the tropical storms and the hurricanes. That's just what we, what we do. Kevin Guthrie has been designated as the state coordinating officer for the duration of the storm. Uh, our executive order will assist. Uh, the division and the state emergency response team in responding to the storm, ensuring Floridians are prepared for potential impacts. Now, as we mentioned the other, uh, yesterday, uh, we have a building here in Surfside that is tottering. It is structurally unsound, and although the, the eye of the storm is, is not, not likely to pass uh, over this direction, uh, you could feel gusts in this area. Uh, we don't know. It's definitely a possibility. And so um, I know the mayor uh, and the, both mayors have, have supported uh, de de demolishing the building. Uh, we brought in on the state level the Department of Transportation engineers to examine the remaining structure and propose different paths forward for demolition. Uh, I'm pleased to announce the state will pay for all costs associated with the demolition of the remaining structure. Uh, yesterday we, both, we spoke with both County Mayor Cava and City Mayor Burkett's teams who made the decision to pursue the demolition for the building. Um, I'm supportive of it. I think it's the right thing to do. At the end of the day, that building is too unsafe to let people go back in. I know there's a lot of people who were able to get out, fortunately, who have things there. We're very sensitive to that, but I don't think there's any way you could let somebody go up in that building given the shape that it's in now. Um, and so if the, the building is taken down, uh, this will protect our search and rescue teams uh, because we don't know when it could fall over. And of course, with these gusts potentially, you know, that would create a, a really severe hazard. So uh, our, our mission is to expedite it as soon as possible. Uh, Kevin Guthrie uh, reports to me that once everything is ready to go, uh, that, that it can be brought down within 36 hours. And so it will, it will entail minimal work stoppage uh, from the search and rescue. They would have to stop a little bit before and a little bit after just to make sure that there were no fires. Uh, but it, it probably the most minimal interruption in terms of the course of action they're pursuing. So Floridians, just watch this. Uh, you know, we're not, not likely to, I mean, beautiful day today, the best day we've had here for sure. Um, you're not likely to see any impacts uh, today or tomorrow, but as we get into Monday, uh, if you're in very southern Florida and then other parts of Florida, as we get into Tuesday, anticipate some impacts. Uh, we're hopeful that the, that the storm just doesn't have enough runway to gain much speed and strength before it reaches uh, our peninsula. Uh, but again, these things are just things that, that we have to watch. But we do feel pretty confident uh, that we are going to be experiencing uh, at least a, a tropical storm that's going to impact a, a lot of communities in Florida. And with that, I can take a couple questions. It's a good question. I mean, what, what can people take? I, I would just say that 
This was a, a tragedy uh, unlike others that we've seen, just because you would not think a building would just collapse in the middle of the night. And so I think the shock was unlike anything I've ever seen. Uh, I think the, the angst, particularly of the families, not knowing uh, if they had loved ones in that building, the folks that were able to escape was obviously a very traumatic experience there. Uh, but you saw people come together very quickly. Obviously, the search and rescue, they've been doing this nonstop. We've been able to work from municipal, county, state, federal, and international. I mean, we had the Israelis here. I met with uh, the, U the Israeli ambassador to the U.S. Uh, yesterday. Uh, and so I think people have been captivated by it because it's such an awful thing. It's like there for the grace of God go I. I mean, so I think what it should tell people is uh, don't take anything for granted. Uh, make sure you tell people uh, that are close to you that you love them. Make sure you hug those. those I mean, I'm, I hug my kids anyways because I love them more than anything. But when you see something like that, you think about there were kids in, in, those ta in the tower. And, um, and then now all of a sudden, you know, people's lives have been shattered. And so, so don't take anything for granted. I, uh, the resilience of this community, South Florida, Florida, and our country, um, you know, has been, has been remarkable. And, uh, and I'm very proud to be associated with it. And, and I think that that's just what we do in Florida. But at the same time, I mean, man, if you're out and, and just living your life, just, just understand that, uh, that, that there can be tragedies that occur. You never know. And um, just make sure that you appreciate what you got. Governor, how will this impact the state's ability to appeal to the So we hope it will impact it in a minimal way. Obviously, the more the storm pushes west, uh, the 11 a.m. advisory actually nudged it back a little east. The further west uh, the, the storm tracks, the less likely you're going to have impacts um, here in Surfside. Um, however, given this plan, and if this plan is able to go forward, it's the opinion of the uh, Division of Emergency Management and Director Guthrie uh, that this building can be brought down prior to those impacts. And so if you have the building down and you start to see wind pick up, you know, that may not even necessitate them stopping at all at that point. Um, it depends. If they are out there, though, and you start to get some of these gusts with that structure there, that would be a real, real hazard. And I would imagine it would likely cause them to do a work stoppage. So taking the building down, given the fact that the storm is coming, and given the fact you were going to have to do this anyways, uh, is the prudent thing to do. And I think it will, it will lead to the most, the course of action that most minimally disrupts the rescue efforts. What's that? Um, I'll let, I know Kevin is, is working with Mayor Burkett and Kava. I know there's this, they got to sign the, the, the con, they got a contractor do it, but they are doing that right now. And I'd imagine Mayor Kava is going to have that announcement uh, relatively short order. Governor, 